Okay. Um, okay, so um, uh, we're going to now uh, go over to the palette. You can see the palette by doing view uh, palette up here if you don't see it. Um, but it should, it's most typically housed on the right-hand side of the screen. Um, and, uh, yes? Yes, um, and I apologize for foisting such a poor uh, brightness screen on you. Um, I would make two requests. Uh, Dylan, if, if that door is open, can you just check the, the hand on the outside of the door? And if it's open, maybe if you close it, it will cut down the glare a little bit. Um, but we're having them replace a bulb in here over lunch because we, we complained already. Um, it, is, uh, can people last until lunch with, with this screen? Okay, because their 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 requisition to come come replace it. Um, I apologize. We have a portable projector which we can roll out, but it involves some logistics. So, so, so if you can bear with it, I appreciate your patience and, and tolerance on this front as well. Okay, so over here we have a palette, and what I'm going to ask you to do is to go down to the state chart part of the palette. The palette is organized into a bunch of different pieces. Right now, it's showing sort of general things, and we'll be learning about these vocabulary over the next over the next day or two. Um, functions and events and dynamic events and parameters and variables. But right now I'd like you to go click on state chart. Okay. And in state chart is how this model is built up. It's by recourse to state chart. And in the state chart you'll find a transition. Okay. Um, and what I'd like you to do is to um, uh, is to go a uh, drag from the transition um, over to the recovered state, okay? Um, so uh, I'll do the same here. So you're gonna drag over here and until you're over recovered, okay? Um, and w I'll, I'll do that again for those who uh, had trouble following it visually. Uh, drag, and I'm actually putting particularly the, the one it's coming from, the sort of uh, top one shown here, over recovered because I want this transition to come from recovered back to susceptible. Okay? Um, and then I'd like you to drag the other end of it up to susceptible. Okay? Um, and we're going to put aside, uh, as we, we will do often in this boot camp, a bit of the aesthetics. Um, but there's actually ways, so this, this transition is now going there. If we wanted to put a little, um, uh, a little kink in it or a little, um, uh, a little extra thing. You could double click on it actually, the transition, and drag it out like that. Um, and actually you can, you can put as many of them as you want in it, okay? By double clicking on the transition. But the transition should go from recovered to susceptible. Now, ladies and gentlemen, one important thing, as you've got this transition graph, it should be green where it comes from, green where it goes to, okay? Those will indicate a solid connection. If it's merely white, if it's, if it's white, it's an indication that it's not really connected, although, you know, your eyes may tell you it should be. But it's, like, this one is not connected. It's white. It will change green when it's got a good connection. Green for all systems go, okay? Um, so we've added a connection from recovered to susceptible. What does that represent, folks? Can anyone, what, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a biological set, sense, um, or, or What does that represent? Going from recovered to susceptible is what? <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, so Brunham's arrested immunity hypothesis would suggest you can blunt the immune system in this regard. Um, and, and in fact, antibiotics can, uh, can lead to a mutation of bacteria, and so then you can become susceptible again to a new strain of bacteria. Um, but this can also represent loss of immunity. So pertussis or something, you build up a certain measure of immunity, but you have to get revaccinated after a certain amount of time. Um, uh, and in some cases, you know, uh, gonorrhea, for example, um, it's a fast enough mutating bug, you can get it susceptible again, flu, other fast mutating bugs, right? Okay, so going from recovered to susceptible. We've added this transition. What I'd like you to do is to type in waning immunity, okay? It's a transition name, waning immunity. You notice it doesn't show the name, but
but you can get it to show the name by clicking show name. Um, and, and that will allow you to, to oh, drag the name around. Um, it's interesting when you, when you drag the name, it, it changes to transition suddenly, and, but then it settles down. So, um, so this show name will, will show it or, or not, okay? Um, and I'd like this to be a timeout of 100, okay? Timeout of 100, boom. Mm -hmm. So after 100 time units after they've become, uh, recovered, 100 time units after they've recovered from infection, they're going to, um, they're going to become susceptible again, okay? Okay, so let's, let's, let's run this guy. Um, and we could do run on slow recovery, say. And what should we see this time? Anyone want to hazard a guess? How, how should what we see be different? People could recover. I'm, I'm stopping it so we can see if we can get a, a sense from people. If people can now, can now lose immunity, what did we see earlier? We saw this annulus expanding. The action was here. People were infecting others here. And here people were still infected, but they couldn't infect others really. And then there was a growing core of recovered people. And eventually what happened? It became all what? Right. It became all great. All recovered. So now what's going to happen? How is it going to be different? People can become susceptible again. Okay. I'm... I'm actually, uh, th the fact that we, we did made that change actually adds some texture to this. Okay, so here's our gray. Now what should we see eventually, though? the gentleman's question, if this now were not a, and, and by the way, we could run this, this normal, normal, and, and are they going to get infected here? By the way, this is running faster for good reason. Um, because the fewer infected people, therefore fewer people sending events, and therefore fewer events that handle. Um, so this is, this is expanding out, and we're going to see them here. Are they at risk here? No. Um, you're going to have them at the center. There's even this bigger sort of buffer. But if we were to change this back to a rate, are they at risk there? OK, let's change that back to a rate, back to its original original thing. So folks, I went to person because we're dealing. Why did I go to person? we're dealing with personhood. We're dealing with changing the way we describe what it means to be a person, the evolution of a person, the processes to which a person is subject, the rules that govern a person's behavior. People use all different terminology for this, but that's what we describe in the person class. Now, there's many particular people, but there's just one person class that describes personhood here. And we, we click double-click on person, and we're going to click on the recovery transition and change it back to rate, being a rate-based transition, right? Um, right? This is just what it was in the, in, uh, you know, in, in time prim, uh, primordial? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. You could have many persons classes, and, and you could have uh, 
you know, and doctors and nurses and, and uh, you could have, uh, you know, uh, extensive different numbers of persons. They could even, as we'll hint in, in pro if a lecture, if we get to it, you can have um, subclasses of people. So you could have, you know, these are healthcare workers and of those are these subtypes of healthcare workers and they all share certain characteristics, you know, and, and, and then there's patients which are a different group, but they're all people and they, for they can all get infected, et cetera. Okay, so great question. Okay, so, um, so here we're gonna run this. How will we see, how would it be different now? Can anyone tell me? This is our normal simulation. How will it be different now? Aha, because now the length of time someone's infected is not a certain thing. There's a chance for even time to recover, but some will recover sooner and some will recover longer. It'll take longer to recover from infection. And one of those people who remains infected for a long time may do what? They may infect the next generation of susceptibles that starts to appear. So if you see these new susceptibles in here that are appearing, some of them are getting, in fact, infected. Okay? And what you will see is, so this is actually the, the, the fast recovery, and you're seeing in fact, the emergence of a new wave of infection. It's less pronounced and it's a little bit, it's a little bit perhaps hard to pick up with, with the three brightness, but there's a new wave of infection essentially occurring in here. Can you see that? This effect, however, will be more pronounced. You can see that it's kind of this new periphery coming up. These guys, as you know, the time since infection increases, they're more likely to recover, and then they're more likely to uh, to go on to lose their immunity. So you see this new wave, ladies and gentlemen. This was for the fast recovery. Yeah, you could you could see it there um, emerging quite nicely. How will this be different for a for a um, uh, a case? I'm sorry, that was with slow recovery. For a fast recovery, how would that be different? Let's run it. Okay. So here we have a, a bigger buffer, but we have some susceptibles that are going to be forming in here. They're going to form a bigger group, right? And now they start to get seeded with infection. So now we have these kind of waves of infection coming out. You have these sort of little pockets associated with different subgroups of the population. And now, indeed, we are we are coming into a, uh, soon we'll have a third wave of infection in there. Now, where is the wave of infection? Can we program in a wave of infection in this model? Is there somewhere in those, in those equations or those formulas there's a wave of infection? Can we put that into the model? No, that's an emergent property of the model. It's, it's an aspect of high-level behavior in this case that we wouldn't have expected from any one thing we see in the model. The fact that there are these waves in the first place, and that they're, they're largely fairly circular, and they propagate outwards, uh, and the fact that we have these recurrent waves because of this recovery or this loss of immunity, the waning immunity transition, that is in no way dependent purely on any one component of the model. Um, what it is dependent on, ladies and gentlemen, is an interaction of a variety of factors, an interaction of this, this sort of uh, natural history of infection combined with something about the spatial context, combined with our assumption about where the infection started, how it was, it was seeded, and importantly, how it's transmitted. So let's go just take a peek at how it's transmitted. So if we go to person, double click on that, and you see the natural history of infection. There, ladies and gentlemen, in this, in this um, little state chart there is a thing called contact. And this occurs with a rate, and people are contacting each other. Because the whole essence of this model is transmission of, of something. In this case, it's, we're assuming it's infection. And with a certain rate, a given person will be contacting others, will be, will be sending
giving them information that says, hey, you're subject to infection. You're subject to infection. Now, the only people that will listen, indeed, to that message, so that's the infection transition here, and it's occurring with a certain rate set by the, the contact rate and the infection probability. This, this infection message, which brings someone from a susceptible state to an infectious state, which makes them vulnerable, is the presence of that that makes them vulnerable to infection. If they receive that message, they'll get infected. Okay? So, so here, what we have is when someone's infectious, they're sending these messages saying, you're infected, you're infected, you're, you're subject to infection, you're subject to infection. If everyone around them is recovered, they have no transition out of this state that depends on hearing the message. Someone's infectious. They have no transition out that depends on them hearing the message. They'll just ignore that. A recovered person ignores that message. An infectious person ignores that message. But someone is susceptible in a susceptible state, they have this transition. And if, that, if they get a message, they will say, oh, oh man, I got infected. OK, I'm going to transition to this infection. Oh, we're going to be going through this in a lot more detail, but that's the, sort of the essence of how this is working. Okay? Now, what I want to emphasize, though, is if you, you can study this model until you're blue in the face, and there's no one piece of it that, that leads to those, each of those features we've just seen, to those waves of infection, to the fact that we have, we have this circular thing, etc. It's a combination of, of all of these different pieces together. Okay, um, so uh, with that.